fit check. Does this fit go off or what? Yeah. What's up, it's Scro. Flume and Getter, two electronic music producers that they don't really make similar music at all, I would say, but they're both pretty big inspirations of mine. Flume's like really melodic, and Getter, at least his older stuff, is like pretty dubstep, rhythm-y, very heavy, like, I don't know, super grimy. More recently, Getter's been doing melodic stuff. You might be saying to yourself, Scro, uh, wasn't your last video like a Flume, how-to Flume video? Uh, uh, I don't care. Funny enough, what got me into Together is his remix of Marsh of the Marshmallow song. Let's say if we wanted to put both of those guys together in a box, if they were to do a collab, I think it would sound just like this. So let's just start with the stack and get all the crazy stuff out of the way. We have our bass sound, we have our melodic stack sound, and then we have our drums. And it's actually a really simple setup that I have going on. So I just have four elements that are in a group and then I just distort the shit out of it and that's literally it. So the first sound here, we have just a normal triangle wave sitting sort of like the middle of the keyboard. I'll go over the theory of this at the end because I think it's actually really important to how it hits and how crazy it sounds. And then we have a really low sub bass. Then we have some white noise. And we have this weird sound that I made. And if you put those all into a group and distort it, uh, it just sounds like garbage, which is what I'm going for. And the biggest culprit in this sounding like a distorted mess is that low sine wave sub thing. If I take out the sub sine wave thing, it just, I don't know, it sounds distorted and crazy, but it doesn't sound like that mangled mess that I'm going for. What's cool about this setup is that you can sort of modulate how the distortion sounds by how loud each one of the four elements is. So I took my white noise and I'm actually modulating the volume on it. So if you listen to it by itself, you hear it getting louder and softer and that kind of affects the distortion in making it like heavier, more compressed kind of. It gives it that movement so it's not just like the white noise shifting in and out gives it a little bit more modulation. It's subtle, but you always want that kind of movement in anything. So this is how I made that weird glitchy synth sound. Uh, I made this one shot sample, which is just like a square wave. Da -dum, da -dum. You could like program a synthesizer to do that or like any VST, but it's just a little bit easier to have a one shot and then every time you play a note, it does like two notes. So I'm gonna record the audio coming out of this and while it's recording, I'm going to move the MIDI clip around so it keeps like, I don't know, glitching out. So you can hear, I don't know, that that's it sounds glitchy and messed up and weird and that's how I got that sound. Sounds way cooler there than what I just did, but. but then again, you put them all together in a group and you just distort it. And that's my dirty bass, dog. Now that whole group actually has a low cut on it because I just want the tone of the distortion. I don't want my sub bass to actually be distorted. I want my sub bass to be really clean. So I have another sine wave right here just playing the clean sine wave and then you put that together with the distorted bass and it makes like this really big, heavy sound. All right, so the kind of melodic stack, the actual chord. I have no recollection of how I actually made that and I don't have the synth pads or whatever, so these are basically just samples that I made using granular synthesizers. We'll keep it at that. So we got this one which is playing like a D flat major nine. And then we have this one, which is like playing a D flat major nine sharp 11. I don't know if you hear that note in there, but I did that on purpose because in the key of E minor, if you go back two whole steps, you're at scale degree six, which sounds like the coolest, most melodic sort of, and I'm playing like this really big juicy chord that fits diatonically, all the notes are in the scale, but it's just really like dense and crazy. And then you put that together 
with all the bass sounds and you get some crazy mess. And one more layer I'm adding on top of that is this death fan. Shout out Boston. Uh, I have no idea how he made this, but he sent me a sample pack and I use this in like all my tracks now. It is very sick. Oh, it's good. You feel me? And then we put all that together. And there you have it. That's the sound. Later in the drop, there's this like really tight rhythm that's playing. My memory card ran out of battery and now it's later outside and the lighting is different. So not sure what that was about, but anyway. So the cool thing with dealing with like audio over MIDI is that you can just chop things off immediately and any reverb or anything like that will stop. And usually when you're working with synthesizers, if there's like a little bit of reverb or if there's like a tiny bit of a release, if you let go of the cord, it won't stop automatically. So I've been printing a lot of my synthesizers to audio so I can like chop them a lot heavier. So I'm able to get this really tight on and off sound like this. Take a look at our drums before we go any further. So I don't know why I did this, but I put some effects in the drum group. One is this Swedish horn that I found online. And then I also have this distorted noise. And I was doing like a FaceTime Zoom call with a friend and my microphone was just making that noise and I thought it was really cool. So I recorded it. So because both of these are audio, you can see I chopped it off right on the hits of the drums. Basically like side chained it. So I have two kicks. One is a little bit more flubbier and the other one's a little bit thicker. So I put them together and I got like a fuller sound. That's usually like a big no-no is using two kick drums, but um, I don't care. I got the evilest hi-hat sound I could find. And then I added some weird percussion to do like another hi-hat pattern. For whatever reason, I have this weird like bubble blowing sound. I don't know, I guess I thought it was sick and that kind of doubles up with the snare. So all together we have this for the beat. So of course the bass and the melodic and all the everything is just side chain to the kick to give it. I don't, I don't need to explain what a side chain is. You know what that is, but here it goes. Let's talk about that webby web. This is a somatics one shot. Sorry, if you know me, you know, I don't give a damn about dubstep. So I don't care about designing dubstep noises, but hey, a little wub here and there. It's not gonna hurt anyone. I'm editing like the length of it. So it's playing really short, which you could call the articulation of the sound, which I think has a huge effect on the groove and the vibe of something. And because it's audio, I can have these really tight cutoffs on it. I also have a bunch of reverb on it and I'm automating the mix volume up when there's actually no sample going on. So you hear the reverb only when there's no sample. This purple square is when the reverb comes in. So again, this is that like weird interaction between having like a huge room reverb sound and having like a really tight sound. I think I like this so much cause it's not possible to do this in real life. Like if you're playing drum set and you hit the snare, no matter what, how much you dampen it or how much you put your hand or a bunch of cloth on it afterwards, there's gonna be some ringing that happens afterward. But with recorded audio, you can just cut a sample off and you know, that's it. There's not gonna be any sounds after it. So when you automate the reverb on and off, you're getting that same idea of like a really big room and then a really tight cut. So in context. So I have this other gross distorted bass sound that comes in a little bit after the drop. And this is that same thing, just grabbing a bunch of elements and then distorting them together. Cutting that sound down and then using an actual sub bass to fill in the low sound because you don't want to distort like your low sub bass. You want it to be really clean. 
I know it sounds bad. Like quality wise, it sounds like I didn't really do it that well. And you're kind of right, but I kind of like the way it sounds. Like it sounds like the speakers are broken and not in a good way. It sounds like I actually am like clipping the master, but uh, I'm into it. I think this is a fill from some sample I have and then I just cut it up so it's like this tom kick split and then this sound right here I was looking up like TikTok sound effects and I was like oh my god this is the sound I've always wanted in my tracks just someone like yelling super aggressively super heavy and then I'm just distorting it a little bit more after that and then put it all together And this is probably my favorite part of the whole track right here, actually. I just have a clean sine wave. There's no way you could hear this unless you're wearing headphones or you're listening to this on huge speakers and you have the subway up because it's just like this super clean sine wave coming in right here. It's like super gangster sound. And it's got your low rider going down the street just with the subs destroying the whole neighborhood. And that's it. It's actually really simple, but this is like one of my favorite things I've ever produced so far. And I'm really excited to finally play it out and DJ it, or I don't even know, wipe my butt to it, go for a run, wipe my butt to it. And that's it. That's like the majority of the track. Super simple arrangement, super simple sound design. I would say the biggest thing that I like learned from producing this is just to make whatever you want to be the main theme to be loudest. I know that sounds really stupid, but I really wanted this like granular vocal sound to be like the tone of the whole production. And I was having trouble like getting it to cut through and I was like, why don't I just make it super loud? And like, it was so loud. It was on top of the drums, on top of the kick. And that was like the tone for the whole thing. That's something I kind of learned from more Kismet. I was watching one of their streams and they were just like, yeah, you just turn it up really loud and it like sounds really sick. And I'm like, oh, that's the trick to EDM. Just make it really loud. Anyways, I hope I did Getter and Flume justice in this uh, cool genre mashup, I guess you could call it. In all honesty, this was actually inspired from the homie Boston who showed me a whip he was working on. And it was so insane that I had to basically rip it off and do my own version. As you saw, I used some of his samples in this track as well. So please like and subscribe. I'm a little bit embarrassed to even be saying that to say, I'm gonna try YouTube, I'm gonna be a YouTuber. Well, I just like doing videos like this and I like putting out video content on TikTok and Instagram and YouTube. And uh, if all I have to do is to tell people to like and subscribe and then they'll do it and that'll help me out so I can continue making these cool videos, then I guess I will start saying that. So please, like and subscribe for more. Go check out this track. This is the Glitter Scrow remix, originally by Kislaw. Shout out to Kislaw for having me on the remix pack. Go check out the other producers that did their remix of it too. I usually do and say something kind of funny and stupid at the end of these videos while the things are over my face. I feel like I wasn't very entertaining for this. Is that the only reason I'm doing anything nowadays, is to be entertaining? Is that all this is for? Do I even care about the integrity and merit of the art that I'm putting out? Do I care about the creative final result and that it fulfills me? Or am I just doing everything for views and subscribers and plays and all the vanity metrics that comes along with that? This track goes out to that motorcycle guy. Peace out.